that I'll follow up on that question. I was just going to reiterate what what Cindy sort of said about the small sport organizations. And I think that sometimes what students forget about a small organization, be it sport or otherwise, is that that position for direct market or, or finance really means that's going to be what you're hired for, but your job's going to be all things in the organization and you're going to get a holistic experience of having to do a whole bunch of stuff and likely if you go work for the wanderers that may involve being the mascot because i understand almost every employee's had to be it except for derek um and and so that that opportunity is something that you don't get in sometimes big organizations where your tasks can be very small and focused and that even happens in sport i know speaking to a former basketball coach who was talking about you know college recruitment it was getting to the point where no one was developing players they were just going recruit a number four just recruit a four and they have a very set box and they were really actually amazed when they go play kind of in the one of the minor pro leagues that how bad the basketball players were because they'd just been taught how to do one thing and they didn't have a holistic sense of the game so they didn't have like a full game and so those little organizations allow the same thing um, and I guess to turn over to Yan, because we talked about globalization, is you've been a player in, you know, almost Saudi Arabia. You've traveled the world as a youth into different places. I think you spent some time in Belgium, and then you went to kind of England, and then I think you ended up back in Belgium, but then in England, and like two different clubs, uh, probably one or two other stops that you may not have wanted to put on your Wikipedia page, because it's like, ah, I can't believe I showed up and they promised me something. Um, and it didn't quite happen to be. Um, and so about that experience of what you've seen in, you know, the changes in sport. And I would think that, you know, from the small world, the friendships, then even also the changes from the, you know, the amount of activism that, you know, went from the highlights of, of the 60s, when you look at kind of um, the stance on the Olympic podium, uh, you look at Muhammad, like, so that one too is a very strong point where athletics is very political to actually sort of the unpolitical. And now we're back where there's a, so many more stronger messages too. So if you want to share a bit on that journey in the different places and roles that you played in all that, that would be a wonderful story to hear. Um, the issues were always there, you know, to be fair, the issues were always there. Um, sexism, racism, uh, everything was there. I think when Marvin spoke a bit about the introduction of technologies making the world a smaller place, it is actually helping everybody to it's actually open their eyes. Things that we would not have been able to see, uh, even a, a situation like George, George Floyd, things that we would not have been able to see. I remember when I was younger, there was a situation that took place with Rodney King. And I, I used to tell myself, had that happened in 2021 or 2022, a lot more people would have had a detailed understanding tr through seeing it for themselves, what had happened. And I, 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 honestly, I, from my understanding, the only thing that was different from Rodney King and the George Floyd incident was that George Floyd died. You know, um, I have been both fortunate and blessed enough to be everywhere on the planet. Um, I've played football in over 100 countries. And I, I love the fact that I've gotten the opportunity to see the best of the, those countries, but also to see the worst of those countries. Um, for me, I think those situations have, have helped me to develop as an individual, to know what, what I want and what I don't want for myself, for my family, for my peers, for the people around me, for the organization, for Wanderers, and for the, for the organizations and the teams that I've worked and played for. Um, when it comes to my time in Europe, in Belgium, in England, and I spent some time in Eastern Europe as well. I spent some time in Hungary. Um, those experiences were eye-opening to me. Um, it taught me to understand something as simple as body language, because I was in, in Hungary when Rosetta Stone wasn't teaching Hungarian. 
So it was difficult for me to learn the language. So I had to sit back and I had to really look at, at, at everyone around me, look at their tone, not necessarily what they were saying because I couldn't understand the language, but to look at their tone, their body language and to try to, to, to get some, some sense of understanding through that. Um, I remember I had one player who, when I signed with a club in, 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 in Hungary, Ferenc Varos, um, a team in Budapest. After about, after about a month and a half, I noticed that he was in the locker next to mine, that he just, he wasn't there anymore. I wasn't seeing him at practice about two or three weeks past. And I had this one player who was Hungarian, but he was actually, when he was like about four or five, he left Hungary and he went to England and he grew up in London. And then he came back when he was a little bit older. So he knew how to speak English and he grew up outside of, of, of Hungary, outside of uh, Budapest. And he was my friend and I spoke to him and I asked him one day, I was like, what, why, why did this player move? Like, where is he going? Or has he transferred to another club? What has happened to him? And he said to me, plain, and, and, and what, what I liked about him, he was brutally honest. He said, um, his family and the area he grew up in, they won't allow him to, to be in a club that has a black player, let alone sit next to a black man in a dressing room. And that was the message for me. It, that, that was eye-opening because... Where I come from in Trinidad here, yeah, we believe that there's some level of racism. Um, but the racism here, because the country is, is predominantly uh, people from Africa and people that came from India, from India. So the Africans came through slavery and the East Indians came after slavery was abolished to do what, what was known as indentured laborership. And the level of racism that I saw in, in Europe, it was so, it was so bad. I have to be honest. It was so bad. When I came back to Trinidad, I was like, guys, like we need to stop this. Like, because it doesn't make sense because when you go and you get exposed, we were talking about globalization to different parts of the world and to different situations. You could either use it to do two things. You could use it to make you a better person or you could use it to help you to grow and to help grow the people, the environment, everything around you. So I've always tried to, 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 to do the latter. And as I said, some people would have, I had, I had players there, I had some African players, some players from Senegal and, and, and Sierra Leone who were there. And they left, they went back home after the season. I, I was eager to, halfway through the season, sorry, I was eager to stay on because I felt like, me doing well and me being successful would have opened so much more doors and would have connected so much more and given information to so much more people who didn't have the knowledge, who didn't have the cell phone and who didn't have social media and all these things to teach them, well, hey, it's okay to be friends with a black person. It's okay to be you know, to, to have a black teammate, to have somebody sit next to you in a dressing room, everybody's human, you know? So these experiences have really helped me to learn and to grow. And I, I cherish every single one of them. I've been to Japan, I've seen, I've seen situations there. I've been to Paraguay. I've, I've, I remember sitting in the airport in Paraguay as soon as we got in and kids walking up to us and asking us in Spanish to touch our hair because they've never seen hair like that before, you know? And, and, and again, it's important for, it was important for me to try to, to ensure that the experiences that these people were having were good experiences because I don't think there's a, actually I know this, there's not a bad race or a bad creed or, or, or color of person. There are only people who lack knowledge and information who we seem to be or who we deem to be bad people and people who have knowledge and information and, and those people are, are the good people. You know, so people who know and who have experienced and who were told that it's okay to be, to, to, it doesn't matter the color of the skin or the color of the hair or the color of the eyes. Those are, those are the good people. And, and people who don't know, they just lack knowledge. So the knowledge I have gained throughout my travels, I just always try to pass it on and always try to be, to be a good person. I always try to, 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 to interact with good people. And even if I see people who, we can, who I consider the bad people, I try to educate them. Because for me, 
it's about how you treat people at the end of the day. It's about how you interact with them. It's about being a good person. That's the most important thing. So again, I would, I would always treasure all my experiences, all the places I've traveled. Um, and again, it's just about learning, growing, developing yourself and trying to develop the people around you. I just, thanks for sharing all of that. And um, because, you know, when I looked in all the places you played, I was wondering about the Hungary experience and, and because I once shared a train with an African-American during uh, the World Cup who'd been through Hungary and her experience mm -hmm. was how horrific it was. Um, <laughs> and so I was, was hoping bad. in terms of, 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 of that, and I'm not sure how we ended up at the Romania game in you know Bordeaux, but we ended up on a train for a long time. And I, I but I, I just remember that story of her telling me what that was like in in that experience. And so to hear as someone who lived it in much more intensely, not as a tourist, um, really sheds a light on on just how much how that challenging all of that was, and then how to some extent being a good pro in that positive sense of like fulfilling and being the best self, despite probably all the energy it would have taken and energy that you shouldn't have to use in all those situations is, is an important, um, you know, is a super important thing. And, and I think for, you know, for people to hear the challenges that people go through to it, you know, to make a difference and attain their goal. Yeah. For yeah. those who don't know about Rodney King too,